Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to Learning Game Development. This time we're going to take a look at cameras, what they're used for, why we use them and how useful they actually are. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every part of this series and everything else I upload on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So let's start by fully exploring what exactly a camera is in Unity. So this scene by default came with a main camera. And if we click it, we can indeed see a little render down here. And what this is, is exactly what the camera can currently see based on its position, rotation, uh, and everything else you, you would need it to be. So obviously parts of this camera section here reflect what we can see here. So let's go through a couple of basic things and understand why a camera is important. So if we were to press play now and try and play the game inside our game window, we can, we can see it happen. So everything that we've created, we can physically see. And do you remember when I said that this uh, cube would float? Well, there it is, it's floating. Now, what we can do with the camera is turn it off. And we can actually do that by unticking this little tick right here. And that applies for any game object inside the hierarchy. You can turn it on and off just by using this little section here. But what that does mean is when we press play, we won't see anything. We'll get a warning or an error saying no cameras rendering. And what that means is that this camera is turned off. So we physically can't see what's occurring in the game. So much like any other object, we can move it around. We can pan it around, do what we need to. But obviously the camera itself has its own dedicated component and it's this camera component which becomes important in many different ways. Now the main things that you can work with here are things like the field of view and whenever you change things in this particular uh, section you'll be able to see the change occur here. Whether you have the game view uncoupled or not you'll still see what the camera can see just here. So if I change the field of view we can see that is the kind of effect we're going for. And if we press play and render it in our game window, we can also do it real time while the game is running. But one thing to note is if we stop this game view now, this will reset to what it originally was. And again, this applies to any actual object that we're working with. So whether it's a cube, whether it's a model, if we change something in that game view, it's just going to reset to what it was before we pressed play. So going back to all of this here, we could change things like the projection from perspective to orthographic. And the difference here, you'll be able to see if we go and click on our game view. The perspective view is basically how you would expect to see the game being rendered. And the way you could interpret orthographic is basically a flat version of that. So yes, it looks a bit weird like that. And if we were to move the rotation, we can see exactly how that is rendering on the screen. So it's giving the kind of 2D version of what is 3D. And although it's not specifically great in this term right here, it's actually a very useful thing to do for certain cameras. You can have multiple cameras rendering at any one time, uh, but it's, it's not always necessary. I think it just depends what you're trying to create here. You can end up having overlaying cameras having different things being rendered. And again, that's something I cover on various tutorials on my channel whenever you go through a series. Um, so for now, let's change it back to perspective. Uh, let's change the field of view back to 30. In fact, we'll change it to 60. And we can also change the clipping planes. And what these clipping planes are is how far ahead the camera can render. So if we change uh, the far to zero, we'll basically remove everything so it can't see anything at all. If we have it as two, it still won't see anything. Now, if I have this moving slowly, you'll see things start to render inside our window here. See that there? Changing that view there, that's basically saying the camera can only render that far ahead. And we can kind of use that to our advantage because if we move the camera closer, you can see in this little main camera render window here that things do start appearing the closer the camera is. But you can also use it the reverse way. Having it near like that means that only this section of the camera will ever render. 
So again, if we move this camera here, you'll see that only certain things ever get rendered in this little window here. So nothing in front of here and nothing behind there. So it's just a little technique that you could use for various different things. Cameras, as I say, are always so important within video game development. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to get it just right because they can either make or break game. There aren't too many settings with a camera, but there are different things that you can do. Um, for example, we can make it look a little bit better if we change it to deferred. However, this is a bit more memory uh, intensive and you would also have to work a little bit more. So something like post-processing um, obviously is more intensive and post-processing again is something I cover on my channel. Uh, but essentially to get the game working, you just need the camera and by default Unity has good default settings. So you don't really need to play around with it too much. But I would always just select things, change things. Like we've changed that solid color instead of having a skybox and we can change that to whatever we would want it to be. So just a quick setting like that. And now our game looks completely different in the game view from the scene view. But that's just because of how the camera is rendering. So if we were to add another camera, so if we go to game object and click on camera, let's move this camera somewhere here and click on game. This camera is now the one that is rendering. But if we turn it off, we can see that that's the camera rendering our original one. And if we turn that off as well and turn our original camera back on, obviously we end up back in that scenario. So what I would recommend more than anything, if you want to focus on something at this point, cameras. I so recommend just working with cameras and finding the best kind of visual that you can create with a camera, especially when it comes to things like the field of view. Don't overdo it, but don't underdo it because then it just looks a little bit ridiculous. Um, there are plenty of other settings to work around with and play with, but they're something that, again, you get further into development and learn new things and understand more. So in the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to start taking a look at some programming. Now, programming in Unity is always done in C Sharp, so that's the language we're going to use. Until then, thank you very much for watching, guys.